You're listening to KEXP. You can find us at 90.3 FM in Seattle, streaming worldwide at kexp.org. I'm Cheryl Waters down here in the KEXP studios with Bob Moses. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning. It is so great to see you again. It's good to be back. Another wonderful record. You kicked it out of the park again. Thank you. Or hit it out of the park. I hit guess it if you're, you depends on what it. game you're playing, yeah. right? <laughs> we played all the games. We, we, we like hockey, so there's, there's no going out of the park there. You know, you just stay in. <laughs> Try and get it in the net. Yeah. Well, it's so great to have you here. Bob Moses, the new album called Battle Lines. And why don't you take it away? All right. We're going to start with one called Back Down. Bob Moses, live here in the KEXP studios. Songs from the new album, Battle Lines. Sacrifice all your life, it's in 
Moses live here in the KEXP studios. Heaven only knows from the new album Battle Lines. I absolutely love everything about that song. It makes my heart dance. It was the first song I heard from the new album and I didn't have the rest of the release yet. And so I just played it over and over and over as if it was Thank you. one record. But what a great new album. Your last record was so widely and um, beloved and people just totally were so excited after the release of your three EPs to have that full length and you toured quite a bit. So I'm wondering when you started working on this new record and if you had any different ideas for how you wanted to approach it after, you know, touring so much, playing the last record so much. I mean, we never really stopped touring. That's the thing. It's like, yeah. we just, we, like people are like, oh man, you got to go on a new tour. But like, you know, the, the dates keep going. We just start calling them different names. You know, it's like the this tour and the that tour. But like, we just keep going. So I think we played around 70 shows the year that we made uh, Battle Lines. 
Um, and that was very, like, in, actually very inspiring and very informative about how we make our music, you know? It's like uh, the first record, Days Gone By, was sort of very uh, interpersonal, and we sort of wrote these songs. You know, we've always sort of written about what we know but and, and sort of our struggles. And um, so we went out and saw that so many people shared in these same things, you know, like you're singing songs for people in Egypt or somewhere in the world and they identify with it, which was sort of really cool for us. But that also sort of really inspired us and made us realize, um, you know, the sort of struggles that everyone goes through. And then that sort of like inspired the, the uh, themes for this new record. You've talked before about the vocals being like an instrument in this band. And so I'm not surprised that the music resonates with people who maybe don't even understand um, what you're singing about, don't speak the same language, because it really is just a beautiful melange of music and sounds and the vocals, which I do understand and I think are wonderful, Thank you. can speak to people whether they know what you're singing or not. Yeah, I think like it's surprising to me. People always go like melody and rhythm first and then lyrics after if you're lucky, you know? So, um, yeah, we just, like Jimmy said, we just played in Egypt over the summer and there were like four or 5,000 people singing louder than I could. So that was pretty crazy. I think also we're we're lucky that... English is a universal language now, and so there's something about some people I would think can even sing along without knowing what they're saying. But well, that's true. Even if you speak English, sometimes you don't know yeah. all the words, and you sing along the ones that you recognize, and then you make up the ones you don't because you just feel the need to sing along. Exactly. Um, you guys um, put on such great live shows, and actually, it'd be wonderful to introduce your band because in the live setting, you realize your music with these fabulous musicians. Yeah, this is Julio on bass guitar over here. And beautiful backing vocals. And uh, yes, backing vocals, and then Joe on the drums. They make us uh, sound good, so we're yeah, we're super stoked to have them. Julio, we've been playing with Joe for a few years, and Julio, we just brought into the fold, and we we couldn't be happier. Like he may add so much. So it's uh, it's a long way from coming just the two of us like DJing and me singing some of our songs to like full band. So it's really exciting. That's got to be such a great feeling. Well, talking about when the two of you used to DJ and you'd sing along, I know yeah. that you were very involved in New York and sort of the underground house party, sort of warehouse music scene. And you just continue to bring that energy to your live shows. How do you feel like in the recording and the producing and now presenting live shows that you've grown since that time? Um, I think the whole, everything sort of informs each other. Like, you know, we, we, when we just started out just the two of us and, you know, we started, you know, we never saw ourselves sort of as like a festival act. We, you know, we sort of made records and, and played shows sort of geared towards that sort of ravey warehouse scene in New York, which at that point was sort of going global. So you started playing warehouses and all these things all over the world. And then all of a sudden we started playing festivals and with bands. And we've always kind of been like a, a punk rock band with an identity crisis. You know, we were just like punk dudes who kind of liked and played electronic music. So to us, we came from bands. So we were kind of like, it kind of made sense. We were like, our, our music already had sort of the element, like a lot, we've already put like live bass and things like that. So to add a drummer and to add a bass player felt very natural to us. Yeah, and we like, I think that the live has always, the live arena that we've played in has always very much influenced how we produce in the studio. So like when we started, we were like trying to, we loved this New York rave scene and, and warehouse scene and we like wanted to be a part of it. So we made music that sort of we thought could fit in that. And then as we started playing festivals with Joe and like very, Joe came in and played on some of the record. Um, this was before we knew Julio, but um, you know, like playing with Joe over the last couple of years, touring the last record at festivals and stuff really informed how we made this record. And I think that's sort of, that's partially why we like to play so many shows while we record is because it keeps you, you can kind of get lost in your head in the studio and it keeps you grounded in a way. So That makes a lot of sense. Since you spend so much time on the road touring now, do you find that you can stay involved in sort of that underground scene at all? It's pretty global. Like, yes, is the short answer. Um, we we still do after parties and we still do, we, we make a concerted effort to like play, you know, this is a concert tour, but we're also making a, an effort to like keep in touch with that scene because it's a very much a part of what inspires us and... Yeah, what we'll we play cool, so. a lot of festivals too where they're like we'll be on a, a dance stage but we'll sort of be the live act on that dance stage and we'll play with other DJs who are either friends of ours or acts that we're fan, fans of so it, it ends up working out quite nice. The lines are really blurred nowadays. I feel like electro after EDM became this huge thing, people have really opened their minds up in like a alternative mindset and a pop mindset to like dance music and electronica and how that all can influence. So we feel like when we're at festivals... 
like Jimmy said, there's like a lot, a wider range of acts that play. So it's sort of like the underground scene is sort of bled into the alternative scene in, in a big way. So it sort of, sort of feels more together. Well, speaking about dance and electronic music, you have your own spin on that where you add organic sounds as well. So obviously EDM is a very popular genre and people like that, but it's kind of nice to, when you come on the stage and then it's like, oh, this is just a little bit different. And you two come from a different background in music and I'm just still so tickled about how you knew each other when you were younger, but went to one of the biggest cities in Vancouver. So you're a local local band, yeah, yeah. but you went to one of the biggest cities in the world, New York, and that's where you ran into each other and sort of sparked this relationship. But coming from different backgrounds, when you first started to play together, were you kind of thinking that, you know, it would be something that would take the long term where you were like, well, we'll try this, but I don't know what it's going to sound like. Yeah. I think like, I just thought to myself, I mean, our background sort of started at the same place and then diverged and then came back together again. Like we both played the same like talent nights at high school, his metal band, my punk band, you know, sort of bleeding the lines. And then we kind of went off our own ways when we got sick of our bands and did our own thing for a bit and, and then kind of came back together. And I think that we both, growing up at the same time in the same place had all the same influences for the most part and had a same sort of same sort of vision of music and musical culture and i think um that really helped us and when we first got together my thing was just like oh i'm let's just try this out like let's just see how it is i i haven't played with anybody really in new york that i'm like inspired by and we got together and had one session it was just like yeah, sparks right away, you know, like, so we, we were just kind of like, I think we got together on a Tuesday and by Friday we were like changing all our plans <laughs> to make it so we could work together. Well, I love that you go all the way to New York, this massive city and end up in a great band with someone from funny your hometown works. of Vancouver. Yeah. And I heard you guys have moved West now. Are you in Los Angeles? We okay. made the record in LA. Yeah. Um, we like to say that living somewhere is really just an extended vacation. Yeah, because um, you're on the road all the now time. Now we're on tour again for the next 18 months or so. So, um, yeah, we made the record in L.A., and uh, we're kind of bouncing around now. So we'll see all what right, happens so next. All right, so any city that wants them could yeah, happen. Maybe it <laughs> we're like the Olympics. <laughs> Bob Moses are live here in the KEXP studios. Battle Lines, the fantastic new record. Um, before I ask you to play a couple more songs, tell me about the title of that record. Uh, the title, um, you know, we had written a song called Battle Lines, and uh, we were looking for a title, actually, and we were throwing a couple ideas out there. And uh, this graphic designer actually... We were looking for a cover around the same time, and we saw this cover sort of with this fire road that sort of had this really interesting thing to us but we didn't know the story about how that how that picture came to be it's not a very like there's not an obvious story arc there and we just thought it was a really interesting way to sort of summarize battle lines it wasn't overly pol political in a way but it, it it there was a story there to be told and it just felt with sort of the like the melancholy of the record and all that sort of stuff it just made a lot of sense to us so seeing the cover and then having that title it just yeah it kind of made it all make sense yeah we, the the record's a lot about sort of like different battles that we go through in life, you know? So we weren't sure about the title at first, but like Jimmy said, once we saw that cover, it kind of like added to the, it made the title have sort of a very open and they sort of inquisit, like it was like, oh, what does that mean? Battle lines. And then you kind of go in and like, if you go through the record and you listen to the songs and look at the lyrical content, you're sort of going through all these struggles in life, whether it be like interpersonal or, within our society or all that stuff. So we thought it just lended itself. It kind of came together really well. Well, I love the new record. Again, Battle Lines, the new Bob Moses record. Play a couple more songs. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, let's do it. Um, this one's called Enough to Believe.
Mm, that was beautiful. You're listening to Bob Moses live on KEXP. Listening to Bob Moses live on KEXP, the title track from their new album, Battle Lines, out on Domino Records. That was so fun. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's so great to see you. And again, such a great new record. You've got it tuned to KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.